Let me try a demo that I haven't actually had a chance to try it out before class. So I don't know if it'll work or not. Um, if it doesn't, this time I won't actually try it multiple times, I'll just move on. There's a point in that I'm trying to illustrate if it works. So let me give it a try. This is the Van der Graaff generator that you guys have seen before. You guys seen the spark flying across the thing. I'm putting this far away so that there won't be spark. But what that spark hopefully demonstrates is that this gets charged up electrically when I run it. So what I want to do is, oh, I was missing two people. Um, what I want to do is I charge this up and place another object near it, see what happens to it. Turn it on. Charge it up, maybe. All right, it's getting charged too much. Oh, oop, turned it the wrong way. All right, that's as charged up as it's gonna get. All right, let's uh, bring this in here. Uh, yeah, that's what I was afraid would happen. Um, let me do it with a new balloon. I'll explain later. Let me try it with a new balloon, and if it doesn't work, I'll move on. Uh, I hope it's still charged up, and let me bring this new balloon near. Oh. Mm. Does it look like it's kind of sticking? Okay. Yes? A little. A little bit. Yeah. Not a lot. So, you know, um, so I'm bringing it like this. And I bring it near enough, it kind of moves towards it a little bit, right? And once it's stuck, then it kind of remains stuck. So, you know, when I bring it near, sticks. Okay, I need to charge it up again. <laughs> Let me. Okay, that's enough. And when I bring this near, it sticks a little bit. Oh, <laughs> there. Um, Right? Sticks a little bit. You can see the attraction, right? Okay, so that's what you see with the, these balloons. And the second demo that I wanted to do involves a special arrangement. This time I'm just trying to discharge it so that I can touch it without getting shocked. Um, what happened to, ah, uh, here it is. I have a very special device here. Anybody, can anyone tell me what this is that I'm holding? You saw that tap? Okay, that seems so special. Um, let's see. So this is the, I actually have a demo video of this, uh, oh, on the um, college's YouTube channel. <laughs> but uh, I will post it on the course website. I already have one that I made last semester and um, I, I realize many of you can't quite see it well. So there's a video made, I'll post it on the course website so that if you can see it well right now, you can look at the video later. So what I'm going to do is, so there's this aluminum tab hanging between these two. And let me just stick it here. What do you think will happen to it when I turn on the Van der Graaff generator and charge it up again? Any guesses? Okay, it'll get attracted to one side. Anything else? Any other predictions on what might happen after? Let's try it and see. Just gonna do it from here so that I don't. Ah. All right. What do you see? It's bouncing back and forth. It's not just getting attracted. Anyone, any guesses of what's going on here? Yeah, so the distinction, yeah. Uh, now that's not what happened with the balloon. And this is the distinction that I need to draw. Okay, this is done. There's actually more part to do this demonstration. Um, I'll post a video and you can look at the video and you know, 
to that. But the distinction that I want to bring your attention to now and explain now is the distinction between conductors versus insulators or non-conductors. It's really the conductor uh, aspect of it that we are interested in. So let me put this down since they are kind of in your way. Uh, all right. So what do you think the, just you know, based on the words or your experience with the science earlier, what do you think is the special property of conductor that sets them apart and makes us call them conductors? Like, what do you think it defines a conductor? I'm sorry, what? Allow, allow what to flow? When you say electricity, electric charges, yeah, electrons. So, yeah, so yeah, I want to be careful because when you say electricity, do you mean electric force, electric field? Yeah, so that's how we define conductors. So conductors, they allow, mm, let me be more carefully the exact phrasing, they allow electric charges to move within the conductor, right? So it allows the electrons to flow from one side to the other if uh, something makes them. But the key thing is they allow electric charges to move um, within the conductor. And there are some terminologies that you might see in your textbook, homework, that's associated with these electric charges that are moving. So, you know, we talked about the atomic model. So when you see this conducting metal sphere, you know that there's way more electrons here than you can imagine, right? There's several, yeah, so there's, but um, with the conductors, what we are saying, we are not saying that all of those electrons move. There are some of those that move. So when we are talking about the electric charges that electric charges that move. Um, these are the two terms that you may see. There's a term that's referring to free charges. So that's talking about the charges within the conductor that are free to move. And I guess this is the more common term you will see. The less common term that you might see, especially um, in relation to material property, is something called conduction electron. And for our purposes, these mean the same thing. Um, so free charges or conduction electron, they mean the same thing to us. So that's the distinguishing feature of conductors. What do you think the distinguishing feature of insulators is? It's, yeah, it's that they are not conductors. They do not allow charges to move within the insulator. So that's why with the balloons, you saw that they were attracted to the uh, attracted the Van der Graaff generator, and when they touched it, nothing interesting happened. Um, uh, because, you know, charges are not free to, they, they don't go into insulators easily. So it didn't get charged when it touched the Van der Graaff generator, so it remained, um, remained attracted. But with the aluminum tab, this is what you are seeing. If this is the Van der Graaff generator, let's just say this is getting charged to positive charges. And this is the other sphere. It's actually connected through the wire that's on it to the ground. And because it's co electrically connected, this actually does get charged as well. This gets charged negatively. And when you had the aluminum tab hanging between them, when you had the aluminum tab hanging between them, the important thing about this tab is that it's a conductor. Do you ever, does everyone have a sense of what, um, what material is conductor, what material is not a conductor? Um, so when you look at this remote, is this a conductor or insulator? Insulator. When you look at this ring, is it an insulator or a conductor? Conductor, what about this rack? Insulator. Okay, so um, maybe one more. Um, uh, what about this cellophane tape? Insulator. Okay, so what makes a conductor? Okay, um, what about this scissors? 
<laughs> insulating part, conducting part. So uh, what part to, um, so, so what, what, recognize, what tells you that this is a conductor even though you've never done experimental, uh, electrical experiments with it? It's metal, yeah. So if you want to think of conductors as metals, yeah, most conductors are metals. In fact, that's what makes them metal, <laughs> because they're conductors, it's all related. So, um, so this is metal, it's made of aluminum, so it's a conductor. So this will get attracted to one or the other. Based on polarization, we didn't spend a lot of time with this in this class because I'm always skipping materials. But initially, at the very beginning, this has zero net charge, right? So when it's placed between these two, the first thing that happens to this is polarization. There is a separation between charges of, uh, that's within here. So it will get polarized and get positive and negative charge on opposite sides. Now, depending on which sphere it's closer to, if it's closer to here, it will get attracted to this uh, sphere first. Th but the moment, the moment this tab touches this sphere, what happens to it? Now it gets positively charged. So it actually has a net charge. So the, af the moment after it touches, now it gets repelled and it goes, uh, swings over to the negative sphere, and then um, now it gets negative charge, so it gets repelled again, and back and forth. And uh, it actually stops at some point. What would make it uh, stop going back and forth forever? Like, what would cause it to stop? Like, so, you know, I charged up Van der Graaff generator, and, you know, I see it start moving, and I turn off the Van der Graaff generator, and you see it keep, him, keep on moving, right? But you know, I have to imagine that it'll eventually stop at some point. Why would it stop? Well, why would it stop? Yeah, so this is actually carrying charges from one to the other, one at a little bit at a time. So when they are both all discharged, then it'll stop. So uh, I'll post a video of a more detailed one on the website. You can look at it. But um, so I want you to bring your attention to this material property because it relates to what we, are talk what we have been talking about, electric field. We want to um, describe how electric fields and conductors sort of interact with each other. So let me, I think uh, I really do need to move on to Gauss's law application. So let me just give you something to think through and you will answer more of these questions in the lab section. Uh, lab section today is not a lab, but um, group work session, it's something new I'm trying this semester. There's a worksheet there that you will work through. So let me just give you this to uh, think about. Um, let's say I have a region of space where I have set up an electric field. Don't worry about how I did it, I'm just telling you that I did it. <laughs> so I have some region of space where I have placed electric field. And the likely way I would have done it is by placing a plane of char positive charges here and plane of negative charges here. That would have given me this electric field. But you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I just did it. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a conductor within this electric field. So let's say I place a conductor, con a conducting cube here. And the moment I place the conducting cube, things are going to start moving. So what I'm going to tell you is that I'm going to wait until things settle down. I'm going to wait for a static equilibrium to happen. Now sometimes you never get to equilibrium, but here I'm just asking you to trust, you know, we are, we are going to get to equilibrium, so wait for that to happen. So once we are at equilibrium, and this object that I placed within the electric field is conductor. I want to ask this question. As, as a result of this conductor being present here, how would the electric field inside and outside the conductor have changed? Or does it need to change at all? Does it need to change at all? Like can we be fine with the conductors here? The electric field is there, so there's some electric field inside the conductor. We are good. We don't need to do anything. 
Yeah, the way to set up like the, I'm inviting the answer, no, right? Let me briefly walk through the reasoning here because this is one of the rules you are going to hear about conductors. And it's not some rule that's just made up out of nowhere. It does fall out of what we have been talking about here, the fundamental laws of electricity, and what we just introduced about conductors. The key thing about conductors is that there are charges in there that can move. Now imagine that I have one of those charges here, uh, minus E, so that would be an electron. Um, what would happen to this charge if the picture looks like this? It, it wouldn't move, right? Because you see the electric field, so field is to the right, so that means electric force is to the left, to this negative charge. So this will move to the left. Oh, that's not static equilibrium. So I haven't waited long enough if that's what's happening. So, so this charge will, this negative charge will start gathering on this side. And because the whole object is neutral as a whole, that means there's going to be essentially lack of negative charges uh, accumulating on the right side. Where, where do you think it will stop? Like at what point the charges will stop gathering? Like, uh, so at what, like how much polarization is enough that, all right, you've, that's enough, no more charge moving. Like what one condition would you look for? No, the no amount, no more, actually the, the free electrons that's way less than, no, it's not the number of electrons. It's, I mean, that could be a limiting factor in like semiconductors or whatever, but most metals, there's just so many electrons you would never run out of them. Okay, let me ask you this question. As these charges move, do you imagine anything changing? Anything about the electric field changing? What happens with the electric field? What do you mean by slow? Oh, you mean the direction of the field line changes? Well, the way I've drawn here, I've, I've done it carefully so that the direction wouldn't change all that much. But something about the magnitude might change. What do you imagine happening with the magnitude? Becomes weaker. Because if you look at the contribution from these charges here, you will have electric field pointing to the negative charge and away from the positive charge. Those are opposing the direction of electric field that produce that charge separation in the first place. Meaning this electric field will get weaker as more charges separate. How, how, much, how much weaker can it get? Like, what's the limit? Zero. Can it ever reverse the direction? Probably not. So let's make it zero. So imagine you have so much charge accumulated on these two surfaces so that you can say um, electric field here is equal to zero. So now if I have a charge here, is this charge okay just uh, leaving over here and be at static equilibrium? Like this charge that's here, do I need to worry about, oh, that's going to start moving and it's not going to be in static equilibrium? No, right? I mean, the electric field is zero, meaning there's a zero force on it, so it doesn't need to be pushed one way or the other. So now this is a static equilibrium. So this is the association I want you to make. When you have, um, let me do the association with the green pen. When you have a conductor placed inside some non-zero electric field, then when you have reached the static equilibrium, because, and because we are dealing with electrostatics, we are always going to be dealing with static equilibrium um, up until like last week before exam two. So when we have all of this, you are going to have zero electric field inside the conductor. So this is one of the rules about conductors. There's actually one more that I, well, two more that I'll tell you eventually, but this is one of the rules. And the reason I wanted to explain it, it's not some rule that somebody just made up. It's a natural rule that follows from the property of conductor. Okay, so um, that's uh, the bit about conductors and um, electric fields that I need to mention before 
we go up too far. Um, and we are going to bring this property of in over and over. As we are, um, there's, yeah, as we are analyzing some problem, this property will come in handy from time to time. So it's good to keep this in mind. 